Okay. Yep. All right. I'm going to hit go live. Welcome to the next great read, season two, episode two. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey everybody. <laughs> Welcome back. We were just talking about everything that was we bought on Amazon Prime Day today. So um, I didn't buy anything. I didn't know it was Prime Day. I'm like so out of touch with reality, apparently. <laughs> you no, know, I bought more than I should have, but I did it all. Oh, well, I don't know. I've, I've done it before. And I'm like, I don't need that. What is that? That's something weird. So then I stopped. But you look more books. Hello. Oh, I don't. Yeah, I don't buy books. Oh, they're on Amazon right now. They're um, buy one. No, buy two, get one or buy one, get one. It's, it's a good sell, whatever it is, because I was looking at it. And I was like, ooh, what do I need? Okay. A list. I've got some thoughts. Speaking well, of a list and thoughts of books, what do we have tonight? Well, I think that we are talking about, and I'm trying to get my uh, screen going here. Are, am, I, am I driving? Did we decide I was driving? I finally got it okay. going. Okay. Am I there? Can you see it? Are you the designated driver? <laughs> I am the designated driver. Hold up. Not share. Oh my goodness. This is a night, y'all. I'm not sharing. I'm presenting. Yay. Welcome to the next great read, season two. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you have to be present to present. I'm just saying. <laughs> I think summer mode is in full swing this week. Yeah, our theme really, really shows that too. And that does because our theme is basically um, summer slides. They aren't just for water parks because I had a very difficult time connecting to any of the books I read this week, and I'm just officially in a book slump. Um, mm. So that's why. It's like, you know, we have summer slide for the kids. They're like, you know, they go out and have fun all summer long. And then they come back to school and it's like, oh, wait, we have to learn all these things again. So in the education world, we call it summer slide. But for me, it's like um, I'm, I'm sliding down because I just need to find a good book that will rev me back up again and make me excited. So what about you, ladies? I'm finally, I'm, I'm, I'm actually really getting into some of the books that I'm reading right now, but I just wasn't ready for tonight. They actually go with some themes that we have for later on. So I have to save those, but this happens to everybody. And I think it happens a lot more often than, than, uh, than our kids think it happens to us. It really does. And, um, so ready, uh, I'm excited to share some of my faves. It'd be good. Yeah. I'm, I don't mind like a book funk. I, Cause I could seriously read a book a day if someone just let me lay around and do nothing and I got paid for it. Um, but I just get in these, I just nothing. I'll start a book. I'll get a couple chapters in and I'm just like, I'm not feeling like Carrie said, like, I'm just not in the mood. This isn't the genre I really want, or I'm not connecting with these. Characters. And it's super funny at that time. I might not love that book, but I'll pick it up a couple weeks later and it's the best book I've ever read. So I, I usually don't discount the book. I couldn't get into it at that one funky moment in time. Lord knows what's happening. Like maybe I'm just like in a funk and nothing's going to make me happy. Or maybe sometimes it's the um, medium in which you're reading. If you're listening to it versus reading it or vice versa, you just, it really just depends. I get those ways. It does. It does depend, but I do have my go-tos and I'm not one to um, like uh, what the books we're going to talk about tonight are like ways that you can get out of your slump of your book slump, things like work for us. Um, and so a lot of times when I'm in a book slump, I don't read more. I, I don't like to reread things. That's just not something I enjoy. So if you made me reread something in the middle of a book slump, it'd be like a book slump slump because I'd like, no, I can't. So um, yeah, I'll just go ahead and we'll get started. I, I don't remember if I mixed up the slides, so it may be me twice on here, but um, this this book right here, Words in Deep Blue, this is what I go, I don't, I won't reread it, but I know where all the good parts are and I remember the pieces of it. So I'll go to the pieces that make me remember how much I love reading because I'm such a word nerd and um, I just love it when the words on the page are just beautiful. And so that's why I used, I used to have a hard time with audiobooks for that reason, because I just wanted to look at the words and, and love them and reread them over and over again. And this is one of the books that I did. So um, in this book, if you haven't read it, it's not a new book. It's been around for several years, 
um, but it is beautifully written and it is about a, um, a girl and a guy, of course, um, a girl and a guy and Rachel she, at three years before the opening of the setting of this book, uh, her best friend is Henry. And she basically wrote this letter to him because she realized she wanted to be more than friends. So she wrote them, a, wrote him a letter and she thought that she sent it to him. But right after she thought she sent it, her family ended up kind of packing up and moving away. And like, kind of like as a surprise, like it didn't, like she, she didn't know for sure if she was going or not, but then they did go and she tried to get this letter to him professing her love and it never made it to him. So she lives her life for about three years. She's, she and her brother were very much into surfing. This is, this book is set in Australia and um, her brother dies in a horrible surfing accident. And this is her senior year of high school. The grief just makes it where she, she fails out of school. It's just, it's just a, a tumultuous time in her life. She ends up going back to her hometown and trying to reconnect with people there, trying to like get back to her roots. Well, Henry uh, is now the manager of his family's bookstore, and this bookstore is having to close. In this bookstore, there is something called the Letter Library. Um, it's basically a section of the bookstore where you don't go buy the books, but you can write letters to people, like people maybe who have passed, people you have lost in other ways. Um, just, you know, long lost loves or people, you know, all these, you just write letters and you pick a book that's meaningful to you and this other person, or maybe there's a quote in this book that you love. You tuck the letter inside and you put it up in the letter library and nobody ever really like that person never sees the letter sometimes, but people go through and read them and, oh, it's beautiful. They put it back. Nobody buys these books. Rachel has been tasked with putting these books and putting these letters and books in a database. So she's looking at all of these love letters and looking at all of these, these things that have been written for other people. And she's just kind of going through her own grief along with getting to know Henry again and like realizing she does still love him. It's just beautiful. And she is, um, she's very bitter about life, obviously the horrible things that have happened to her. And she's trying to act like this doesn't matter. This letter library thing, this is dumb. Nobody ever connects with this. It's a hopeless case. And he tells her basically that quote there, words matter, they're not pointless. And I love the way he says things like, it wouldn't start a revolution, it wouldn't change history. People wouldn't fall in love because of words or feel bad because of them, or ache because of them or stop aching because of them. They matter, that's how important words are. And so these are the kinds of things that I like to read when I'm in a slump, because I'm like, there's another great book out there with some more beautiful words that'll really like make me feel good again. I just have to go find it and keep going. So that's why I love this book for book slump time. That reminds me of um, Letters to Juliet. So there are oh, yeah. all these letters, these old letters to people. That's what it made me think of. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know you love this book. I have, I, I don't know, Carrie, the way you described it, I really felt like, like I connected with the book. So I really love when someone is that passionate about a book and I have, will read this because you are, you were just that passionate about it. Well, let me tell you one more thing and I, you'll have to borrow my copy of it because I have the arc of it, the advanced reader copy. And I was, we were driving to Colorado when I was reading this book and I was so into it and it was like maybe a quarter of the way before it was going to end. And my husband knows, turn off the radio, don't bother her. She's reading and it's almost the end of her book. I don't want my head bitten off. So I'm sitting there like pouring in this book. All of a sudden I stop, I close the, and I'm not done. I close the book, I put it down and I just go, and he just looks at me and is like, Are you okay? And I was like, there's a love letter in this book by the author, like she has in her letter library in the book. He's like, you're weird. But in the arc, the author stops narrating and it's like a handwriting script font. So you, it looks like a handwritten thing. She writes a love letter to her readers in her book, just like the letter library in the fictional part of her book where they write love letters to, I mean, it was like, it was just so amazing. And it talked about her love for words and why she felt like this was important. And anyway, yeah. Okay. I'll stop talking now. I could go on and on about this book. <laughs> I may skip around here, ladies, because I didn't mix up the slides. So I'm going to skip around until I get to another one. All right. This one's on you, Misty. All right. So like I said earlier, I get in these books Nothing will make me happy. So my um, my way to get out of it is love. 
Like, I'm not just talking about a book that, you know, is a good book. It's a book that I will read over and over the entire thing. And this is actually a series. So I will read this entire series over and I could read them in like a weekend. Love them that much. And honestly, it's sappy, it's corny and I love it, but I could just read them and I just, it never gets old. And I love when you go back and read those ones that you just love. You find something new every time. I've read this this series like hundreds, I'm not kidding, hundreds of times. Um, but it's just, it, it makes me feel good. It gets me out of my funk and then I'm open. I'm more receptive to reading again. Um, and you're actually talking to someone I seriously live and breathe reading. So for me to be in a book funk is a serious thing, but I love that this is a out of it. So um, one reason I love this series is because it is so much with culture. Um, so there's this girl that's from uh, Washington State and her parents died when she was younger and she lives with like an adoptive family and she just graduated high school and she's like what do I so for the summer she needs to raise money for college so she goes and works as at a for this circus and when she's at this circus one of their shows is this top and she just loves the fact like she's she's from Washington She's never seen, like, been this close to a tiger, but she gets to feed him and pet him and do everything. It develops this really good relationship with the tiger. So much that this guy comes from India and he's like, hey, you know, I can see you love this tiger. I would love for you to come take care of him um, while we go to India and take him back to a nature reserve. And she's like, that's weird. Like, I've never done something that's cool. I'll do it. Well, in this process, this tiger is actually a prince that has been cursed thousands of years ago and um, I love it because part of breaking his curse you just learn so much about Indian mythology and India and just that whole area and it's just gorgeous and it's beautiful um, and so I really love immerse, immersing myself into another culture but of course I'm also a sucker for a little bit of a romance but I really like that it wasn't just romance like heavy um, Love interest was there, but it was really about breaking this curse and you learning about a bunch of Indian myths. It's really cool. Like so much that I really desperately want to go to India. <laughs> One of my go-to classics. And it's funny because there are four books in the series and I love each book for its own little reason. And I really like how the author, you know, on your highs and lows and highs and lows, and you're just like, oh my gosh. Um, and it, I'm not going to lie, it, it has a little bit of Team Edward versus Team Jacob, so interest, and you like them both equally, and you're like, but he's this, but he's this, but she loves him, but she loves him too, so it's really cool, and they're both, you know, Indian princes, so you can't go wrong with either, and I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I mean, if, you, if I just, you know, this is just something that it's, it's all, like I said, it's always my go-to, if I could actually I'm really big on finding um, hard hardback uh, author signed. So like that's my nerd out. If I can get um, a signed edition of these books, that's like my uh, goal to get this set signed by the author. So, you know, things to aspire to. I bet if you reached out to her, she'd send you some. I know. Hello, I'll, uh, I'll tell Carl that um, I totally talked her up on YouTube live. Maybe she'll, she'll hook me up. That's right. That's right. This actually was a, a series suggested to me by a student and I do have it in the library. Um, I've never read it, but she wanted me to get the entire set. And that year she kept getting other kids to read the series. Like she loved it once it got in. So I guess I should read it now too. I had a student, um, I was at a school that, and I hate saying this because it's so overused, but it was a really, truly a melting pot and just so many cultures and it was beautiful. And I actually had a student come up to me and Miss Shay, thank you for having books about my culture. I do not, I don't find them often. And, and it, it was, um, the student was just like, can you, can you find more? And I was like, if absolutely do, let's talk about it. But it just, it almost brought me to tears because I was like, I just like, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that you felt represented. So that was huge. It is important. All right, let's see what else we have. Here's Lauren's. Oh, those are oh, some good ones. I know. I looked at her size and I was like, Ooh, I those books now. Okay, so I had a really, really hard time trying to come up with like one or two favorites. And I'm not going to lie, I actually have three slides on here. So 
<laughs> sorry, not sorry, um, but they're kind of funny. So this one is, if you know me, this is very much a duh. This is, this is my reading zone right here. And sometimes when I'm in a reading slump, I'm like, I just need to go back to my good old fantasy sci-fi. Uh, I have my, for me, when it's a slump, it's not so much about the, it's not always the books that I'm reading, but just me and my mood. I read to escape. And so fan, fantasy and sci-fi are, are my zones. So these are a few of my favorites. Um, Renegades can go in either fantasy or sci-fi. I've seen them in both. Aurora Rising and Nixie are both sci-fi and Ember and the Ashes is fantasy. And all of these, I could read all of these more than once, every single one. I know you don't like to reread, Carrie, but, um, and I don't generally because there's so much out there to read, but all four of these are ones that I could definitely read more than once. And I feel like with as much work as we did on Renegades with um, Battle of the Books, I feel like I kind of have read it twice at this point. But Renegades is so much fun. Like, I love that world where they have, there's bad guys and good guys, but they're not really because you get to know them and you get to know them as characters. There's such great character development in Renegades. And that's my favorite part of, of her writing in that one. Because you can't just go, oh, well, I'm for the good guys or I'm for the bad guys because I'm feeling edgy today. Well, it doesn't work like that in that book. Um, so it's a superhero book and really feel good. And um, with some really awesome superpowers. Um, sketch, how awesome would that be if you have the superpower to just draw whatever you wanted and you were a really good artist and you drew it and it just came to life or, you know, that would be so cool. If it my would, drawings came to life, they would just be blobs. That's my thing. I was like, it wouldn't be cool for me though. Cause I can't draw. So, <laughs> but the thought is cool. I would yeah. totally choose that power and Aurora rising. That is like, golly, I won't say like my spirit animal because it's so snarky and sci-fi and just funny. I need a good laugh. Anything I read, I need there to be a lot of comedic relief because a lot of these can get into some very heavy, very fantasy um, things that are going on and, and, and having that that laugh out loud moment just makes it for me. I decided to pull a quote from Aurora Rising and I can't really go into a lot about what they're doing at this point to get this quote, but <laughs> I'll let you guys read it and then figure it out. But just, this is between Scar and, um, my gosh, I can't think of his name. The main guy, well, not the main guy. Anyway, I'll just read it. All right, Pixie Boy adjusts the ridiculous little hat on his head. I look like a fool, it's too tight. How am I supposed to fight in this? And she says, uh, I don't know, sexily. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much banter back and forth and I love things that are just witty and just funny. Nixia, there is so much action packed into that book. And um, I, I don't even know what else to say about that one. It's just so fun. And it has a really neat element to it. The, the Nixia itself, trying to imagine what that's looking like as her. It's, it's like this... Um, what would you call it? a material? It's an alien material and they're using it to form things and fight with it and learn how to like become one with it, to use it in ways that um, are really creative. And um, they're trying to go to this planet to um, mine more of this Nixia. And um, there's a lot more that comes out in the background of what's going on and it gets to be a little more complex, but it's a really fun book. And Ember and the Ashes, it's such a beautiful fantasy. And I just love this author. I don't know if you guys follow her on Twitter, but she is hilarious. She's so just down to earth. She's talking, everything is about chocolate. I'm like, I'm all about that. I'm there. Let's talk about chocolate. <laughs> we need the chocolate. We already ate the chocolate. That's the thing. <laughs> so I don't know. For me, I have to, for me, it's a mood. And usually what will do it for me in my fantasy or sci-fi, but you'll see what else coming up. Yeah, I, sometimes I like just to, the books is sold to me sometimes just from what I know about the author and mm -hmm. following them on social media. Sometimes I look at what they're doing and I'm like, oh, I need to read more from that person just because that you're right. That does make it kind of fun. It's almost mm -hmm. like you get a little insight into their brain. It makes you want to read more of their books. <laughs> you can hear their voice in it even more. Yeah, true. Okay. Sorry about this. I have to go. Oh, that's too far back. That was like... <laughs> Goodness. Welcome. Welcome to our show. Let's try this one. There we go. Okay. 
this one, these two. So I picked a little rake hitting me in the face bit emoji because I just need sometimes something that is just going to just hit me with either strong emotions or strong memories or just like it just kind of comes out of the blue and it hits me. And that sometimes makes it where I want to reread something. So I know I'm going way back in time with Summer of the Monkeys, but there's so many strong memories with this. And most people don't are not a lot of people, maybe not most people. My former students are certainly aware of this, but the um, I would read this book out loud to my kids when I taught fifth grade. Um, and this was a uh, just, it was a great read aloud, but it was just, it's written by the same guy who did Where the Red Fern Grows. So most people are familiar with that, but then they didn't read anymore. But this one to me is better than Where the Red Fern Grows because it's more centered on um, the humans. Um, you know, where, where the Red Fern Grows has so much of the dogs. This one is so much of the human and his relationship with his family. And I love it. He has, um, he lives in the same general area as the boy in Where the Red Fern Grows. He has his own hunting dog. They go out you know, hunting for raccoons and all that kind of stuff. And um, he also has a sister who is, uh, who is born with a deformity and she has a hard time walking and they're a very poor family. Um, he has a grandpa that runs a general store in town. So it's just a really sweet story. Well, one day a circus train's going through their area, it crashes and the animals get loose and they get all the animals back except for the monkeys. And there are, I think, I want to say like 12 monkeys, like what you see in that picture underneath the word monkeys. And there's one chimpanzee who is out there with them. And the chimpanzee is the one that's very trained, very much used to humans. The other ones are a little bit more wild. Well, they get into so much trouble. And the thing that the reason why this brings forth such a memory is like there's one scene where the monkeys have found a still in the woods, a, a, a whiskey still. So there, somebody's out there making whiskey illegally with their little still in the woods and the monkeys found it and they are drinking it. So basically the monkeys are drunk. And the boy finds the monkeys and they are acting like even crazier than normal. And the chimpanzee brings a cup that he found next to the still, fills it up and brings it to Jay Barry. And Jay Barry's like, uh, no, I'm not going to drink this. I could get in trouble. And that monkey scares him so bad that he was like, okay, okay, I'll drink it. He ends up getting drunk with the monkeys. And the, the scene is so hysterical and my students would just die laughing. But the one thing that, that makes me think this, this is a great book is I'm reading the book to the kids. There's a scene towards the end. I can't give you away too much, uh, too much of it away, but um, the boy, Jay Barry has to make a decision and his grandfather is trying to help him make the decision by giving, dropping some major hints, you know, and, and Jay Barry is just not getting it. It's like, all right, I'm just going to head and go. And the grandpa keeps giving these hints about what he should be doing instead. And there was a boy in my class. This is when I taught fifth grade. There was a boy in my class. Every time Jay Barry would start walking away from his grandpa, that boy would be like, <laughs> like he was feeling it. And it finally, it like, it got to the point where the, Jay Barry's walking away and it looks like nothing's going to be done. And that little boy, his name is Michael Gasparro and Michael is on Facebook with me. So if he ever watches one of these, he'll hear his name, but he was out there in that and it, when Jay Barry walked away, he's like, Miss Harris. Oh, I just hit myself. Miss Harris. <laughs> he's like, what is he thinking? Does he not understand what his grandpa is trying to do? What is wrong with him? Is here like he felt it so much that makes me just want to share this book with everybody and reread those moments because it brings back those strong memories. Uh, the Art of Racing the Rain. I know there was a movie. It was a decent movie. It was a sweet movie, but it was not the book. They uh, glossed over a, a little harsher fact that happened in the book. Uh, the movie was actually based on the YA version, I believe. The, this book I just picked up in, in the airport randomly because it had a dog on the front and I thought it looked cool and I needed a book because I left my book at home and I was about to get on a plane. I mean, that's seriously how I discovered this book. And um, it, I, I just, the emotions in it, just the fact that the reader knew more about the characters than the characters did because we were seeing it from the dog's point of view. You know, the dog knowing that the the, the uh, wife had cancer before the humans knew that she had cancer. Um, the, the dog 
their scene where the wife always left the groceries outside as she stu- as she would like go out and get the stuff and bring it back in. And the birds would always get into the grocery sacks and eat at the food. And he, the dog would see the birds and they would laugh at him because they're eating his food. And then one day the mom goes for a walk and takes the dog for a walk and has the bags with him and with her and picks up his poo with the bags and leaves them on the back porch and the birds come after the bags. And then the dog is laughing at the birds from inside, like, ha ha ha, that's what you get because they're eating. It's, I mean, little things like that. I laughed so hard. I cried so hard. Just, it was another one of those beautiful books, but this time it was more about the characters and the fact that I knew more. It's like, I was an all knowing person in this book just like the dog was so strong emotions I want to go reread pieces of that as well I that one sounds that. like a cry fest yeah it it was a cry fest and I don't normally like to read books about dogs like I did not enjoy where the red fern grows I hated it I did not want any part of that <clears throat> um but this one seemed to have it was cool because it was from the dog's perspective and I like books from different points of view so I thought oh I'll try it um but yeah, if you do choose to read the uh, the first version of this book, the the reason for the owner getting into trouble uh, is a lot more mature than it was in the movie and in the YA version. Um, it's not like so awful because he didn't do anything wrong. He's just accused of something that he did not do. Um, but I felt like they glossed over that. I felt like knowing knowing the things that he, that were in the adult book, it almost made it more powerful for the way it all worked out. So I'm just saying I would read the other one. I wouldn't read the YA version if you didn't have to, but that's just me. Anyway, I like books that slap me in the face with uh, emotions and memories and I'll go back and reread them. And that makes me happy again. It makes me want to find more books like that. All right, let's see if I can't mess up this again. Let's see if we'll go to here. I didn't mess it up. Yay. This is you, Misty. Oh, you're muted. Story of the year. Uh, because my child uh, is not loving going to bed. So, <laughs> um, yay. Okay, so I love diving into a familiar universe and fandom. So I have fandoms that I seriously, I would cosplay. And just, I love these fandoms and these authors so much. I've read everything by them. Um, and I will read, I will continue. And it's not even that good. I will read it because I just love their universe, um, their universes. So one is Cassandra. And if you watch that shadow or not shadow bone, oh my gosh. If you watch instruments on shadow hunters on reform or CW, whatever they call it now, do not judge these books by that show. That show, like she said, it's like the movie. They just piece it together, wanted to try to make it a hit. And that's what, you know, you got. And it, played the books there was just so much more but if you want somewhere to start I love the infernal devices so clockwork angel clockwork prince and clockwork princess are my favorite books by her they're the ones that I will reread over and over and over again um and Cassandra's Claire Cassandra Claire's world are shadow hunters and shadow hunters are um humans but ha- they have they're part angel as well um, the angels bless them and now they can help fight evil and like demons and vampires and werewolves and all those things. So, and it's really funny. I like how Carrie said earlier, or, oh no, actually Lauren said this. You don't know who the bad guys are in the good guys, because just because these shadow hunters are part angel, not all of them are good. And not all of the vampires are bad and not all the werewolves are good or bad. So it's a really cool universe. And I really like some of the powers they have. Um, of course, uh, there's got to be a little bit of a love interest, but there's a lot of action too. And I just, I really love and appreciate kind of like Lord of the Rings when a, an author will really develop a really good universe and, and create that fandom and really like um, the universe that Cassandra Clare has created. And she has a bunch of other books and series. And, um, but I think this is a really good one to start with, even though it's not her like first book. Um, it's a good one to start with because it actually actually starts back in um, London, back, um, you know, way back. <laughs> I, don't, I want to say 1800s. It's probably like the 1900s. I don't even know. In London. And so that's interesting that their character's there. Um, but it has some really cool, like almost a little bit of sci-fi, but it's very fantasy. Um, but I, I really like the Shadowhunter world and I will go back to it over and over and over again. I need a feel good read. 
Um, you may or may not, I don't know if Netflix, but if you are, Shadow and Bone just came out and I'm going to tell you right now, is not true to the books because it is a mixture of Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom and Shadow and Bone. Um, so I love these. This is a uh, Lee Bardugo and it's Shiverse. And um, I love this because it's kind of real-esque, but not really. Like everybody um, has powers and each of the powers. So there are people that can stop your heart, but those are also people that can heal you. Um, so, I mean, you know, are you going to use your powers for good? Or are you going to use your powers for evil? Um, there are people that are, are you know, good thieves and um, because they're kind of like, they can blend into the night. And so all these people having powers, um, there are people that can work with metal and, and make weapons better or just by the fact that he, he can shoot and tell that bullet exactly where to go. Like their powers are super cool. And so um, my, I actually like the Shadow and Bone series, but my favorite are the duology, the Six of Crows duology, um, because I really like Kaz and, and um, Inej. They're my two favorite characters in this whole series. And I love, it's like the Merry Band of Thieves because their whole town is awful. And they're like, I want to compare them to Robin Hood because they're not, but they steal and do things, but, but it's no worse. It's almost like they're doing, they're doing those bad things to bad people anyway. Um, so you really don't feel sorry they trick or cheat or steal from, because those bad people, as you start reading the series, bad things, and I don't, I hate to say people deserve it. That is not what I'm saying. Um, but you really bad when they, you know, they pull a heist on, on this person who's just a really awful person. Um, but I just love all of the characters in the Grishaverse and I love, um, what they bring to this and I'm, I'm just seriously like I could nerd out on on these two universes and this fan song I just I really enjoy them and every time Lee Bardugo writes a book I read it I don't care because I want to go right back into that universe and right back into that fandom you're missing one on here though from what I know of your favorites what Cruel Prince oh Holly Black see <laughs> you just can't Oh, yeah, I love Holly Black, and I love everything she writes as well, and if you want to go into fairies and say, I could go there all day. I was trying to think of the ones that I've read so many times that the, the book, like, I went to my bookshelves, and I'm like, which ones are just so worn because I've read them so many times, and I guess, you know what, I bought all of Holly Black's, the Cruel Print series, I bought it on Kindle because I want to be able to read it wherever, all three of those books. Oh, I love Cardin. I would marry him. I, would so be I, I have to tell you something funny. So I was getting, I was at the Kroger Deli uh, Monday and I was wearing my shirt that said, great minds read a lot. And the kid, the kid that is always there, um, he always, I, I go there a lot. We go there once a week to get our deli meat. Um, anyway, so he's like, he saw my shirt and he's like, oh, reading libraries. You know, we went and started talking and he started talking about all these books he reads. Well, apparently he reads nothing but young adult. And so we started talking and he's like, well, what about that book? Um, oh, what's it? She writes a whole, it's a whole bunch of series and it's like the past and the present. And I was like, are you talking about like City of Bones? He goes, yeah, but no, I'm talking about infernal devices. Oh, uh, see, yes. I, need to, I need to know this kid. Yes. And he said, um, I read all of those. The infernal devices were the best ones of that entire universe. So he was going on and on about that. So I thought that was funny that you also brought them up as your favorite ones of that particular series. They really are. To me, they are. And if you judge her writing in, in that universe by the um, City of Bones, don't. Like read these three if you don't read any of her others. However, I love her new series. I'm I, granted I don't know how it's going to turn out, so maybe I won't love it when she finishes. But um, these these are my favorite three books in the universe <laughs> in the fandom. Well, that's good to know because I only read Mortal Instruments and I mm, did not like that one. So maybe I'll try this one. It was too and honestly a lot that one because it's very angsty teen. And I can totally get into that sometimes because I, but sometimes I'm like, I'm not in the mood for angsty. And this one's just set back. Just, I love it. And she's like, yeah, it goes future, past. And it's just, it's awesome. Gotcha. I'll have to try it too. Cause I did like those other ones. 
Okay, so another one of my favorite genres is mystery. And the, 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 my reasoning behind this one, though, is different. With the sci-fi and fantasy, that's just where my heart lies. With mystery, I really love mystery as well, but it's because it gets me thinking and completely thinking about something else entirely. And I, I'm actively thinking on it as I'm listening, which gets me out of whatever funk or whatever I was in because now I've got something else to focus on. While the other one I can live in, this one I'm thinking through and, and a little more involved in, in it whether, rather than just listening or reading. Um, so I just picked some of some really fun mystery ones that I have read. And um, of course my stalking Jack the Ripper <laughs> in the series. Um, I love the main characters and Audrey's back here going, oh, I roll. She loves that one. Yes, I do. There you go. And it's got, um, that's a blood and guts. I mean, how could you not like that? And here's actually the quote that I think is perfect from it about it really is there's nothing better than a little danger dashed with some romance. And that's exactly what you'll get from that one. That's a fun one. Um, little white lies. That one's a little more, um, like pretty little liars, very, it's more realistic. It's present day. And, um, it has so many good twists and turns though, even to the very last paragraph, I was like, wait, go back. I need more of this. And I can't, I still haven't read the second one yet. And I really need to, but that one is really twisty and turny. And, um, Ooh, that one's really good. And it has like, um, they're debutantes. Like you're in the debutante world and everybody is so conniving and stuck up. And I don't know, it's just a, a diff completely different world, but yet so many different twists and turns. And that was a really nice surprise. Jennifer Lynn Barnes always seems to do a great job. I really like her writing. Um, truly devious. Um, so this was supposed to be a trilogy. In fact, if you look at when the books are all together, it says trilogy. And then she just came out with the fourth one recently. I was like, wait, that's not what you said. <laughs> I don't know how that's going to work. So I need to read that to see where she's going with that. Cause I really thought it was wrapped up, but maybe I just haven't remembered, but this one I really like because it goes back and forth between present and um, a mystery that happened back in the 20s, which is also an era that I really love. And so you get to, a, a feel for that that time period and all the, the glamorous parties of the rich and the famous, but then you know awful things happen. There's a murder and that goes unsolved. And so a present day, our, um, our lead, she is trying to figure out what happened then as well as what's going now at that school. And um, so it's really fun that it goes back and forth between those two things, but it's two different mysteries are really, it ends up being more, but the main, there are two main ones that are going on and I love that. And then these vengeful hearts, I think I talked about this last summer, but I slapped it on here anyway, because it was so good. Um, I call this one like Mean Girls meets organized crime. <laughs> <laughs> It is like a, a secret society in their high school. And these girls, they go and they do some favors. Like they put somebody as a um, homecoming queen that wanted that favor or whatnot. And they get favors in return. And their favors turn out to be like the school of their choice for college or these really big things. And it's kind of pushes that envelope of who they're hurting, how far they're willing to go. And the person that you're following is person that has been hurt or her sister was hurt by this group. And she's going undercover to try to um, expose them all. And, um, and of course she gets kind of caught up in it. And it's, um, it, it was really fun though. I really enjoyed this one. It, it's, it's not so, it's not quite as lighthearted um, because they can be really, really mean. Um, but it was nice to see where it was going to end up going because you really weren't sure how that was going to end up. She did a really good job with that. So it was fun. So me for mystery, I need to focus my mind elsewhere. I love little white lies. I loved it. It's good. Oh my gosh. I can nerd out on all these Lauren, like I, all of them truly devious. Like I liked, it was different and the author kept me going. Like normally with a mystery, I can figure it out. And actually surprisingly stalking Jack the Ripper too. And I love that whole series as well. Yeah. Fun. When you, when you had us read that or we, it was a battle of the books and I read it and I was like, oh, I'm not a debutante kind of person. So all of them love. Yeah. And all of those are very range from different ends. Like Stalking Jack the Ripper is, is obviously it's, it's set back in that time period. Um, but it's like super gore and guts and stuff all the way over to Little White Lies, which is very present and um, uppity and just 
girls being horrible. So I don't know. There's a lot of differentiation here. Yeah, I did. However, like I, in stalking Jack the Ripper, I kind of, there were some parts that I did gloss over when they were talking about all the ways that uh, a more, you know, examines bodies and all that lovely extra stuff you find out. <laughs> I, I normally don't skip the parts, but I was like, and I'm not reading about how they took the whatever out of the body. No, the, no the way. Science person in me loves that. I'm like, oh, really? That's fascinating. I wonder if that's true. <laughs> but I don't want any pictures. I do a Googling, but no pictures. <laughs> yeah, I love it. At least no pictures. Yeah. No illustration. <laughs> Did you say oh, you have another slide on here? Yes, I do. And Audrey's going to lose it. She's, wait, what? <laughs> hear you back there what are you talking about okay romance is not my thing and I and I kind of pride myself on that I don't like girly I don't like romancy but sometimes I found this out recently just about myself sometimes I have gone into so much sci-fi so much fantasy so much really dark horrible mystery that I need a break and sometimes that's kind of what my funk gets into. It's even some of my favorite things that I don't want to dive into because I've done so many of them. So sometimes I need to break it completely and go into something super light and fluffy. And that for me is romance. Um, frankly, in love was so adorable. And again, I have to have the humor in there to kind of break it up. I don't like just the overly, oh, the drama, the drama. No, it has to be like more of a rom-com, super light. Um, and frankly is definitely that. Um, in fact, they go into more of like, it's not all about the relationship in that one. It's more of the culture and some of the struggles that Frank is going through. But the, 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 other, the girl that, that he's got this love interest going, they're faking it at first. And so it's just a funny um, trope that, of course, has been done. But it's just done in, in such a funny way. And so I have a quote from that one, too. Um, <laughs> she says, nerds, says Joy. And we look at her like, so? I'm like, oh, that's me. Oh, that's me all the time. <laughs> like, so? <laughs> and what's your point? I know that. Nerd, right here. Um, and then American Royals. That was such just a fun thought process. What if we didn't win the war against England? And, or what if rather we did, but instead of having a, the first president, he became the first king of America. And so now you have our American royal family. It was just such an, an interesting thought, an interesting turn of events. And so it, it brings you to present day, but it's with royals instead of presidents. And that just gives it just a different feel. But then I really loved the characters in it. You get to know some of them and see what they kind of go through. Um, it was just a fun, light kind of thing for me and very different from what I read. And so sometimes, and I had some more that I wanted to put on here, but I, I'm going to talk about them later on in summer <laughs> so for our summer fling. So I'm going to save some of those for later, but there you go. Sometimes you got to completely do a 180 on what you really like just to get your mind like a, like a cleanse the palate in between meals kind of thing. There you go. There's that. <laughs> and that's exactly what I did with uh, some of the ones I want to talk about later as well uh, that I read last week. So, or two weeks ago, wherever we are now in this process. It's not that we're in a really, it's not that we're in a funk. We just have some that we need to save for later. And so yeah, no, I get you. I understand. Mm. <laughs> well, that was fun. I Now I want to go read some of these books y'all talked about. And I've known about some of these books y'all talked about. And I still, I didn't, I guess I never read them. Like these Vengeful Hearts, I didn't remember that one. That and that one sounds good. That sounds right up my alley. It almost looked like a, a supernatural with the book cover, but I'm yeah. glad it wasn't. It's really not. It is, it is in realistic mystery like those those are the two that would those are your two tags for that one yeah um, yeah I wasn't sure what to expect out of that one but it ended up being really good I enjoyed that one it was last more cool cool I'm ready I'm, I'm ready to read I'm reading one now that's a novel in verse because I thought maybe maybe I'll just I can get through a whole book faster but it's also kind of apocalyptic so that's kind of cool uh, maybe I'll talk about that one again soon well I'm in trouble because I started Crave and I can't stop the series now. And I'm like, wait, I've got to, I've got to put book three on hold because I need to read other books for book talks. And I was just like, but I want to know what happens. But then I also, I have this disease. If the last book is out, I'll stop reading. I'll stop reading because I want to go back and reread the whole thing to finish that last book. 
So the last book is not out yet. So I might stop right where I am because reading two books and a half is easier than reading five books when she finishes the series. So I might pause it just so that I can read them all later. And I will, you know, read some. Well. I don't do that with many of them because I don't, I just don't have the time to go back and read them all except for an ember in the ashes. That one is so complex and they were so spread out when they were published that I had to, I couldn't remember. Um, and you can actually, uh, Seba to here does a, uh, she had something on YouTube where she had, um, okay, a quick recap before you read the third one. If you haven't read the first or the second, there are spoilers. Don't watch this. But she just goes quickly through both books. I'm like, wow, I'm glad I listened because I didn't remember any of that. <laughs> that was a yeah. I, I do what you do, Misty, but I do it with when I have, when there are TV series. Oh yeah. I, I like to wait until there's at least three or four series out or uh, seasons out before um, I start watching one. Cause then I forget about it. And I'm like, eh, I don't want to go back into that again. Similar. Oh, I'm I do. Huh? The new I'm Downton gonna... movie is coming out. And so we're going to do that with the new Downton movie. But watch There's some... another Downton movie coming out. Yes. I need to watch the other one. I never watched the movie. I just read we it Christmas. Movie. I think that one comes out Christmas day. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> there's more favorite things those are those are ones I could go back and watch all of them because there's little things that I'd probably pick up on the second time or third time that I didn't notice the first yeah I got my how am I watching. ever gonna adult again when I have this much stuff to read right adulting is overrated oh but I have to adult and pay my bills <laughs> I pulled well, me today that's enough adulting for me it's time to read yeah oh my gosh <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. We, we could talk about books all night, honestly, if you let us just keep going, but very true. Very true. Can't wait for next week. Do we have a theme for next week? Which one is next week? I don't know. I don't remember our themes. We wrote them down and now we can refer back to them, but we didn't. Honestly, I don't, I don't think we should commit because sometimes we change about midway through the week. So look at social media, follow us on Twitter and, uh, all the stuff so that you can know what we are doing on next week's episode i want to say it's out of this world oh i want it to be out of this world because i have three books i want to read for but i'm only going to read two but that I, one. I think it is. so come out of this world with us come to a fandom come to a universe come to whatever come to a mind bend the, the, i mean the possibilities are endless with out of this world you can go so many places now i have to readjust my reading schedule okay got it i got it we're good we're good <laughs> I have books. I'm ready. Well, thank you guys for joining us. We look forward to seeing y'all next week. Send us some book suggestions or some other suggestions. If you want us to talk about things, we'd love to get your input. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. Rough. Yay.